Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over all the cool manga releases that are coming out in the month of October. As usual, we're doing the monthly anticipated releases, and instead of highlighting just 12 books, I thought, man, why don't we spice things up? Why don't we feature 20 releases? So yeah, it's a bit crazy, but I got some books here that I think you'll like. So let's get started with the first one. We start off this supersized episode with Tamon's B-Side Volume 1. We finally got a shoujo beat release here from Viz. This is a rom-com music theme series by Yuki Shiwazu. When a shiny idol is a sad mess in real life, can his number one fan help him stay upbeat? Tamon is an insecure mess in real life, and what's worse, he's threatening to quit. Utage refuses to let anyone stand in Tamon's way, least of all himself. What's a fangirl to do but roll up her sleeves and support her favorite singer with everything she's got? We all know how hard the music business can be, especially the idol stuff and uh, the boy bands and singers and all that stuff. So it's pretty interesting to see a rom-com set in this world. Next up, we got Neji Shiki Hardcover Edition, published by Drawn and Quarterly. This is the third collected release here of Yoshiharu Suge's work. This is some historical heavy stuff that I do recommend. If you're a fan of Gekiga, do not miss out on these wonderful releases from Drawn and Quarterly. Go check it out. The Ice Guy and the Cool Girl, Volume 1. This is written and drawn by Miyuki Tonogaya, and it is published by Square Enix. This rom-com supernatural story takes place in modern times as we follow Himuro, a modern-day ice deity, if you will, descendant of the famous Yuki Ona Yokai. Himuro happens to be infatuated with his co-worker, Fuyutsuki, who's a little unusual herself. At first glance, the pair both seem to be calm, cool, and collected, but beneath Himuro, Mudo's icy good looks rages a passionate blizzard of love. This is a really nice rom-com. I really enjoyed the relationship that forms between the two characters. It has wonderful artwork. Yes, there is supernatural elements involved, but at the heart of it, it's a truly down-to-earth romantic story about modern-day office life and getting to fall in love with an extraordinary person. So yeah, this is one of the more uh, realistic takes, if you can believe it. I highly recommend checking out The Ice Guy and the Cool Girl, Volume 1. Alpai, The Soul Sender, Volume 1, published by Titan Manga. This story is written and drawn by Rona. In the magical world of Alpai, divine spirits are the source of all life, communities living in harmony under their protection. However, when their lives end, a terrible curse drives them to evil and these malign spirits must be sent to the afterlife by the soul senders. Alpai is one such girl, talented despite her young age and assisted by her familiar pet and I. I don't know much about this manga, but I love the concept and I genuinely love the artwork for this. I cannot wait. If you like fantasy and adventure, you're in for a wild ride with Alpai, the soul sender. Super Morningstar Volume 1 from Kodansha. This is a BL rom-com written and drawn by Kata Aomiya. At high school, Kaido seems to be a scary delinquent, but he's leading a second life as the star of a Sentai superhero live show. When Sentai superfan classmate Honda discovers Kaido's secret, Kaido will stop at nothing to make sure it doesn't get out. But despite himself, the charismatic performer finds himself falling for his biggest fan. Now this is pretty neat. You could have a regular rom-com, BL, and all that stuff, that's great. But to mix in elements of Super Sentai and the love that we have for media, TV shows, gives it a fresh new layer, a fresh new perspective that I think a lot of people will like and appreciate. Betwixt, a horror manga anthology. This is published by Viz Media. This supernatural story is pretty interesting. It's a collection of six stories from Japanese and American representation labeled as an international showcase of horror here by Viz Media. Six short stories reveal the universal fear of the space between the known and unknown. Will anyone cross that border? Featured here is Ryo Hanada, creator of Devil's Line, Aki Shimizu, creator of the Suikoden 3 manga, 
Shima Shinya, creator of Lost Lat London and co-writer of Star Wars High Republic, each tell uniquely Japanese tales of ghosts and creatures who exist alongside us. This is super exciting to me. And the American side of things, we follow Becky Cloonan, Michael Conrad, co-creators of Wonder Woman and Batgirls, along with Leslie Hung, co-creator of Snot Girl and Sloan Long, creator of Map to the Sun, and the up-and-coming creator Hua Hua Zhu round out the anthology with tales that would make anyone paranoid about who they may encounter. So first of all, apologies on mispronouncing a bunch of names. Sorry about that. <laughs> I tried my hardest, but it's so cool to have a collection like this. And some people might confuse this because of the cover, but no, uh, this is not a Junji Ito thing. He was just contracted to draw the cover for it, which looks amazing. I hope we get more of this in the future with other genres. One of my most anticipated releases for 2023 is finally here. Bochi The Rock Volume 1, published by Yen Press. This is a story written and drawn by Aki Hamazi. Hitori Goto just wants to make friends, but the thought of approaching a stranger on her own makes her so nervous that she spent the entirety of middle school teaching herself to shred on the guitar to moderately successful, albeit anonymous, YouTube fame in the hopes of seeming cool enough for someone else to reach out to her instead. After bringing her guitar to school provokes zero interest, Hitori is just about to shred shrivel up and die, which is when Nijika comes across her moping in a playground and begs her to fill in for her band's flaky guitarist for their first ever live performance. It's like her wish came true, but does this most antisocial of introverts have what it takes to perform in front of real people? Bochi is a wonderful character. I really enjoyed her antics and her story, and I was constantly rooting for her. I know it can be hard. I've suffered from some of these things in the past, and still do to some effect. So to see a character like that continue to try and move forward, even if it's bit by bit, and having the willpower to confront these issues and try and make some progress is worthy of praise and worthy of people to check out. Dungeon Friends Forever, Volume 1. Now I do have to admit, the cover for this threw me off, but I read a little bit more into it and I was genuinely interested in this series. This is from Seven Seas Entertainment, from the mangaka Yasuhisa Kuma. It's a rom-com romance slash adventure series where we follow Van the Warrior and Ryuka the Dragon. They have been friends since childhood. Nowadays, Van is a dashing adventurer and Ryuka has become the big boss of a dangerous dungeon. Every time Van wants to hang out with his old friend, he must navigate a dungeon and clobber a coterie of Ryuka's monster underlings. Will their friendship grow into something more? I like that it is a rom-com with the whole fantasy aspect to it and dragons and monsters and stuff. That's always fun. So yeah, I do want to check it out. I've heard some good things about it online and you know how that can go, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Tokyo Babylon Clamp Premium Collection Volume 1. This is another story by the group Clamp. This one is published by Yen Press, a drama fantasy supernatural story following Subaru Sumeragi, who is the 13th head of his clan and a powerful Onyoji. With the help of his twin sister Hokuto and the veterinarian Seishiro, he solves supernatural troubles in Tokyo and helps whomever he can. However, not all Onyoji are so kind. There are some who use their power to kill, and unbeknownst to Subaru, he has a history with one such assassin. If you like a good dark fantasy, occult detective stories, I think you'll be right at home with this. Obviously, if you're a fan of Clamp, you're already sold on it and you're gonna get it. So the fact that we're getting this in a premium set, a premium collection is genuinely great. And I hope we continue to see more of the stories collected in premium format. More of that, please. Next one is Mimi's Tales of Terror from Junji Ito. Now, this one's a little bit different. It's a hardcover edition from Viz Media, but this is based on original stories by Hirokatsu Kihara 
and Ichiro Nakayama, I hope I pronounced those names correctly, university student Mimi and her boyfriend Naoto encounter one chilling mystery after another. There is the enigmatic neighbor woman dressed in black from head to toe, but if she's so odd, why does it seem like there are many others like her? Then, whose eyes track Mimi's movements from the cemetery next door, and why does a bizarre red circle drawn on a basement wall change with each passing day? Nine scary stories that really happened, supposedly. Drawn from the famed collection of urban legends, Shin Mimibukuro, and of course adapted into this manga by Junji Ito. Minato's Laundromat, Volume 1, a slice of life comedy and drama BL series written by Yuzu Tsubaki with art by Sawa Kanzume. This manga is being published by Yen Press. Akira Minato inherits an old rundown laundromat from his grandfather and takes the opportunity to quit his corporate job. Instead of the laid-back life he was expecting, his days are spent in a flustered panic when high school hottie Shintaro Katsuki ambles into his life. Honestly, this seems pretty chill, and I do like the fact that it's as regular life as it will ever be in a manga, and I appreciate that it's a laundromat. So yeah, uh, go check it out if you're in the mood for some romance in your life. Last month we got the Chainsaw Man box set, this month we got The Promised Neverland from Viz Media. This box set contains all 20 volumes of Promised Neverland, written by Kaiyu Shirai and art by Posuka Demizu. As for extras, we got an exclusive booklet and a double-sided poster. If you were disappointed by the anime, ignore what you saw. I know it can be quite jarring and difficult, especially with season two and how that went down. But if you're a fan of what you saw in season one, go ahead and pick up the manga and you get the original source material, the original story, which you're going to like a hundred times more. Trust me on this one. Nina, the Starry Bride, Volume 1. This one is being published by Kodansha, and it's a story written and drawn by Rigachi. Nina had a rough start to life, orphaned and stealing to survive, only to be abducted for her unusual lapis lazuli eyes. But to her surprise, her captor, Prince Azur, ordained that she would live the life of a princess, specifically that of the recently deceased princess priestess, Alicia, who had her same eyes. Despite her changing fortune, Nina won't give up her old life without a fight. Azur might just be the one to finally match her wits, but how much can she trust him, and can she stop the feelings budding in her heart, knowing she must eventually marry another? I do like what I'm reading here. I like the plot for this series. I haven't read it. This is a Jose manga that actually won in the Kodansha Manga Awards last year in the Shoujo category. Monthly in the Garden with My Landlord, Volume 1. This is another Yen Press release. This Slice of Life GL series is written and drawn by Yorokawa. Asa Konsuga needs a change to get over her recent breakup and decides moving to a new home would be just a thing. She finds a great little place a little removed from the city with a lovely garden. But there's a catch. The house also comes in with a live-in landlord. Having a charmingly girl lazying about would be distracting enough, but it seems she's keeping a secret as well. I like the artwork here, it looks really lovely. So yeah, if you're in the mood for some uh, rom-com slice of life, go check out Monthly in the Garden with my landlord. I am an equal opportunist, so I'm going to talk about this one. It is not safe for work and not necessarily for everybody, but we're recommending as many books as possible here. So I wanted to include Honey Trap Shared House. This is by Yen Press. It's a rom-com action series drawn by Koichi Kozuki and written by Masamune Kuji. As a child, Hayato promised to marry his first love, Serafi. 15 years later, he has become one of the world's greatest spies, all while never falling for the temptations of enemy agents. You know where that's going. A mission to expose rival operatives turns chaotic when Hayato reunites with Serafi, and each realizes the other is a spy. Now the pair must live together, torn between love and duty. The question is, who will break first? This has a ton of fan service and uh, some pretty... Uh, salacious artwork, so viewer discretion is advised, but I do like the quirky premise. 
Cheerful Amnesia Volume 1, another Yen Press release. This Slice of Life GL series is written and drawn by Oku Tamamushi. Edisa has lost her memories of the past three years, and her girlfriend Mari worries that means their love has vanished as well. But when Arisa lays eyes on her, it's love at first sight all over again. Hoping to rekindle what they had, Mari decides to help Arisa experience things with her once more, from dates to kissing and beyond. I like the premise that they're tackling a subject like this. Obviously, it's amnesia, so I assume at some point she's going to recover. I don't know if that's a spoiler or not. I haven't read it. I'm just assuming here. But yeah, the art looks cute and the premise sounds uh, pretty wholesome enough that I wanted to recommend it on this video. I may be a guild receptionist, but I'll solo any boss to clock out on time. Volume 1. This is written by Mato Kozaka and art by Suzu Yuki. Guild Receptionist is published by Yen Press. This fantasy series stars the character of Alina Clover, who thought being a receptionist for the Adventurer's Guild would be her ticket to a good life. But her dream gig turns into an overtime nightmare whenever adventurers get stuck clearing a dungeon. To save herself from paperwork, Alina turns to the simplest solution at hand, beating down the monsters herself. I thought guilds, adventure, all that stuff was going to be an isekai, but thankfully it's not. It's just a straightforward fantasy series. So yeah, this looks like a lot of fun and could easily be adapted into an anime. And so yeah, I may be a guild receptionist. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some laughs. I can't remember if I've talked about this before, but we got a new Osamu Tezuka collection. This is 100 Tales from a Blaze manga. This is a story about being careful with what you wish for. We follow Ichirui Hanri, an ordinary accountant servicing his master. Though innocent, he is ordered to commit harakiri after being entangled in some trouble in his master's house. Just then, a witch named Sudama appears. She signs a contract with Hanri to obtain a soul in exchange for fulfilling three of his wishes. Hanri gets what he wants, but the price he pays is too high. The 100 Tales book had been previously delayed, I believe, a month or so, so we're finally getting it. Hopefully, fingers crossed, as of this video hasn't come out yet, here's to hoping it actually does come out in time. Witch of Thistle Castle, Volume 1, published by Titan Manga. This is a story written and drawn by John Tereshin. The last in the long line of witches of the Blackwood, Marie Blackwood, lives a quiet life in Edinburgh, away from the scrutiny of the church. But when the church thrusts 13-year-old Theo into her hands for safekeeping, Marie suddenly gains the responsibility not just of taking care of a teenager, but protecting the world and Theo himself from the amazing power that lives inside of him. I don't know much about this, but ever since I saw the solicit, and I talked about it on Omnibros, I really enjoy the art, I love the composition and character designs, and I'm 100% on board. And finally, Robotics Notes, Volume 1, being published by Udon Entertainment. This is a sci-fi drama mystery series by 5BP and art by Keiji Asakawa. Childhood friends Kaito and Akiho are members of their high school's robotics club, but with the rising popularity of virtual reality, robots have fallen out of favor with young people, and the club is in danger of being disbanded. To save the club, its members set a lofty goal to build their own giant robot. I love Robotics Notes. If you don't know, this is originally a visual novel video game developed by 5BP. It's the third main game in the science adventure series, following other famous stories that you might know, Chaos Head and Steins Gate. So these are all titles that are in the same universe, and that's pretty awesome. So there you go, the supersized edition of our most anticipated manga releases for the month of October. I can't believe I fit 20 books in this video. That's insane. So if you guys are interested in any of these releases, let me know in the comment section down below. And if there's something out there that's coming out that I did not mention, let me know as well. Pretty interested to find out what you guys are excited to pick up in the month of October. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.